All right, hello, wine drinking people. We are back. It's Thursday, January 6th. And as I mentioned um, on the first show of the year, we've got some new segments we're going to be introducing this year just to get the staff a little in, more involved here in our email messages. And uh, I left one segment out. we got a, a, a segment probably on Saturdays we'll do called Tony's Treats. My lovely wife, Tony, does a lot of the food that we do here for our events, and uh, she's going to be introducing one of her signature dishes or treats that we'll be serving at one of our events. And uh, we're also going to be offering these for sale. So if you guys are interested in trying one of these, you don't have to come to the event or you can't make it to the event. You can just order it and we'll have it here ready for you to pick up. All right. Well, today's segment, I think I've already mentioned we're going to have a um, just a little question for Ward every week because, uh, you know, everyone has their own responsibility here at the store. And one of the things that Ward handles is wine storage. And we've had some issues here as to what the proper way to check in your wine when you bring it to the wine watches. When bringing wine for storage purpose to the wine watch, what should one do? Should it be in a box? Is it appropriate to put my name on the box? Can I place a number on the box for identification purpose? Will I receive an Outlook file with a snapshot of what I've dropped off? Yes. Ha! All right. And um, what did I have to drink last night? Well, hey, the purpose that we are here, man, is to follow my drinking throughout the course of the year. All right? So we're not going to forget about that. We're not going to cut you guys short on what I drank yesterday. All right? But unfortunately... It's a short day for me, you know. We didn't have uh, any suppliers in the store. I think a lot of people still kind of shying away because, uh, you know, the holidays just followed, kind of picking up the pieces and cleaning up, uh, you know, the leftovers from uh, the holidays. That's what we've been doing here the last couple of days. But, hey, you know, I am still going to have wine with dinner. And, uh, you know, I figured I should take one of these Evening Land wines home, the Occidental Coasts, to see how it's drinking. And this is one of the hot new properties that we introduced this year. We use these wines in several of our gift boxes, and uh, this is one of the, the uh, top Pinot Noirs made in this 08 vintage, in my opinion, from the Sonoma Coast. And it's, uh, well, these this, these guys bought the Occidental Vineyard. This is not their Occidental Vineyard wine. It's just an Occidental Coast cuvee that they do. And um, But from the Sonoma Coast, and some of the fruit comes from that vineyard. So... Um, uh, really intense fruit you get out from the Sonoma Coast. Lovely bright acidity, lovely black raspberry, black cherry fruit you get in this wine, and uh, has a little bit of that uh, uh, egg, has a little bit of that uh, earthy quality that you get from Pinot Noir, but has uh, uh, also a lot of that spice and floral notes that I love in California Pinot Noirs. And uh, wonderful concentration, but wonderful balance and lovely freshness on the finish. Uh, this is one of my top picks for Pinot Noir in the store in that $45 price range. All right, and next up, um, hey, you know, a good friend Brian Del Bondio from Markham. You know, we've had a couple of his wines in the gift boxes this year. The 07 Cabernet Sauvignon is one of the great values from Napa Valley. We had it on sale for $18.50. Unfortunately, we've had to raise the price on this one to $21.50, but still an outstanding value. This is a wine that sells for the upper 20s, lower $30 price range. No matter where you find it, classic Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, black currants, cassis, and uh, just a right touch of oak spice, not overly oaky and not overly sweet and fruity for a Cabernet Sauvignon, more serious in style. But uh, a classic, typical Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon and a great buy at $21.50. And, hey, I'm still sucking on those vintage Tardive wines. As I mentioned they're, before, they're probably going to be gone by the end of today. They were on fire. I can't believe, man, for sweet wines, how well these have been selling. But uh, I got a few uh, – I got a little bit left in the bottles at home, so we'll report on those how they are on day five tomorrow. 